Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. It is August the 18th, 2021. Happy Wednesday to you. We have a lot to talk about, some very important stuff here related to what is now Hurricane Grace down in the Caribbean, strengthening as we speak here. And then we have to really watch Tropical Storm Henri. And in case you were wondering, that is how it is pronounced. It's not Henry. I think it's the French version. So it's Henri. The H is silent. And you need to get to know that name very well because I think that there is an increasing probability here that we're going to have to be dealing with Henri at least indirectly with some pretty major impacts from it affecting the East Coast and possibly direct impacts. And I'll explain what all that means here as we go forward. All right. So the tropics definitely ramping up. Any talk of these systems being anemic and, you know, yawn, wake me up when there's hurricanes or whatever. Well, here we are, and I want to address something, too, real quick. This is yesterday up in the mountains of the Carolinas here. This is from Evan Fisher. You know, people take these hurricanes and tropical storms, and I guess they think that they're only coastal problems, and if they're not 100 miles per hour or Category 3 or whatever, then they're no big deal, You know, and they dismiss it. And I'm here to tell you, that's just ridiculous, and this is the evidence of that. We've seen it time again, but I'm going to, uh, time and time again, I'm going to remind you of it. This is the rain band coming through yesterday up in the western part of North Carolina. Very heavy rainfall in the aftermath of Fred. You know, these systems do not stop when they hit land. You know, I don't know why people think that they do, or that if it's not a hurricane, then it's not a big deal. You know, these people do not live at the coast. All right, so that, you know, you people get all upset about, well, people live at the coast, they deserve it. First of all, that's BS. And secondly, this is not the coast. Are they not supposed to live near water at all? You know, these are impacts from these tropical systems. And I think that the more people see these impacts, the better they can understand that, look, hurricanes are something we have to deal with. They are not just something that are good for ratings or people's businesses or whatever. It's a natural phenomenon. They have far-reaching impacts. They do serve a purpose in nature, even though when we get in their way, so to speak, the effects can be pretty nasty. So these are just some tweets here from Evan. You've seen other ones that he retweeted. Reed Timmer was up there. You guys probably know who Reed Timmer is. I mean, look at this tweet. This is scary stuff. Flash flood emergency. This was really dangerous last night. And, you know, I'm on this rant here because... You know, I see people that are like, you know, wake me up when the real hurricanes come or, you know, Fred's not going to become a hurricane or whatever. What is this fixation on 75 miles per hour? You know, it's like, I don't get it. I mean, hey, look, I understand it makes for much more exciting video, I guess, when people are filming the wind and the rain at the coast. But what I just showed you, is that not also exciting? I feel like um, Maximus in Gladiator, you know, when he's like, are you not entertained? This is not entertainment. This is nature unleashing itself on us. And if we're not prepared for it and don't understand it up here, then we have no hope of dealing with things and mitigating damage. So there's my scientist, you know, experience, 25 years, whatever, of, uh, of kind of uh, reading the riot act to people that think that these uh, storms are nothing if they're not big-time news-making Cat 3s or higher or whatever. All right, that out of the way, uh, at least for that part of it. Here's the remnants of Fred to that end, and look, it's still bringing feeder bands all the way up. Now it's in western par portions of Pennsylvania, eastern Ohio through West Virginia, and hopefully the flood threat won't be as bad up here but you do have this mountainous area all through here and that could result this heavy rain could result in some flash flooding issues as this all moves up and eventually out into uh, New England and beyond and then this will kind of set the stage perhaps for what might be coming with Henri a very interesting setup here as we go forward so also want to uh, not forget Linda out here I thought that perhaps it would just dissipate and not be a problem for Hawaii and kind of reassessing that a little bit not hedging my bets too much yet though 
Still looking like it'll be post-tropical here, well north of the Hawaiian Islands, but there could be some swells that come out, especially on the North Shore. So if you're over there in Oahu and you get on that North Shore, you might have some decent swells from this, maybe. Uh, I think it will start to weaken. The water temperatures are cooler over here. The air mass is more stable, and Linda should weaken away. But these annular hurricanes, where they become sort of these truck tires, uh, and here's what it looks like somewhere on a satellite picture. There it is. There's Linda out there in the Pacific. Um, they last a long time. It's a lot harder for those to weaken when they get to this particular structure. Uh, so there's Linda out there in the Central Pacific. All right, so moving on to our interactive tracking map. There's Linda. We already covered that. Uh, the remnants of Fred post-tropical now, so it's not showing up on our cyclone tracking here, but it is up there, uh, I assure you. I showed you the radar there from Mark Nissenbaum. So now, and I got to meet him the other day. That was pretty cool. So now, of course, we got to keep track of Grace. Now it's a hurricane. Everybody happy, so to speak? Okay, there's your hurricane. Uh, second hurricane of the season. We're well ahead of schedule. This is Henri. It's going to be a hurricane eventually. We will reach uh, probably the third hurricane before August 20th. And that'll be the first time that's happened since 2012. So that's important to note. Uh, so if we zoom in here and take a look at the tracking for uh, Grace down here, going to go across the Yucatan and then into the southwest Gulf. And the ridging will be strong up here. And so it's, there's no chance, 100% chance, it will not directly impact Texas. This is one of those times that I can say that it's 100% certain it won't impact Texas directly. There will definitely be some swells that will come out from this. Those swells will reach all the way up to portions of the Gulf Coast. But the threat down here of a landfalling significant hurricane is certainly there for our friends in the Yucatan and across the Bay of Campeche, southern Gulf, and into Mexico. And exactly where this makes landfall in Mexico, probably south of Tuxpan, Tuxpan, however you say it, uh, that's where the storm surge would be the highest, for example. As this comes in, the surge is going to be on the right-hand side of the track, typically. And this concave shape to the coastline, that could be pretty problematic. Next, we've got to keep up with what's going on with Grace. As you can see, a good deal of eastern New England now in this cone of uncertainty area. And I think this is going to shift even more to the west with time. And there is a legitimate threat for direct impacts in New England over the next few days beyond the direct impacts. This will, as it develops, send out swells towards the coast as well. So we're going to have rip currents. We're going to have all kinds of problems setting up well ahead of any potential direct impact. These indirect impacts, which is a weird thing to say because Henri is causing the swells, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, that's going to be problematic too. And just like the flash flooding up in the Appalachians and you know, the whole idea of it's just a tropical storm, people hyping it up, whatever. Hey, look, when you have to bury a loved one because they died in the high rip currents uh, and the threats of you know the big swells and the waves come tumbling in and you're not prepared for that and it might break your neck, we see that. It's true. Ask the doctors and the people that work in the ERs and the beach patrols up and down the East Coast. It does happen. So take that very seriously as this develops. If you're headed to the beach, especially this weekend. A lot of people will be doing that. School is either just starting or getting ready to start for most people. You're going to have one last trip down to the beach. These swells that are going to come in are going to be a problem. And i got to keep you safe because if you're not there watching me, I might as well quit, right? Because I do this for you guys. I enjoy it, my passion, but I want to ex you know, use my experience to help you to stay safe. Real quick, looking at the stats, Category 1 right now on Grace. Uh, probably going to reach stronger than that, in my opinion. Why not? It's over the Northwest Caribbean, where upper ocean heat content values are pretty darn high. Then we have Henri, well on its way to becoming a hurricane eventually. It's got a little bit of uh, sort of funk to deal with out here, but in the next couple of days it's going to turn and encounter much better conditions, and I think it's going to ramp up and be at least a Category 2 at some point. That is my professional opinion. I think the forecasts will reflect that in the next several cycles. Uh, so let's shift east to the next satellite animation here from Tropical Tidbits. 
There's Grace. There's Henri. More energy off of Africa. Big Saharan air outbreak out here coming off of Africa. A little bit farther to the north than we saw earlier in the year. And it's interesting. We're going to have kind of this break, I believe, where we're not going to have much in the way of new development, new stuff. We're going to have plenty to deal with already with Grace and Henri, but not much in the way of new development anytime soon. However, going forward, it looks like a convectively coupled Kelvin wave is going to develop. I'm going to show you a tweet about that from our good friend Eric Webb in just a moment. Uh, so let's take a look at a close-up of these satellite areas real quick. This is Grace down in the Caribbean. Uh, pretty good lightning display here impacting the Caymans earlier today. Uh, people that were watching some of the webcams there on Grand Cayman, those were pretty wild. And you can see it's got a pretty good tail, a feeder band coming in here, central core developing. Very warm upper ocean heat content through this area. So once it can establish an inner core and get that inner core well insulated from any negative effects that might still be out there, this is going to be off to the races. And it won't surprise me if this makes it to 100 miles per hour before reaching the Yucatan. That wouldn't surprise me at all. So anybody over there along the east coast here, Cozumel, Point South, Cancun, be ready. It's coming. It's hurricane season. You know this stuff is bound to happen. And it'll be interesting to see. I'm sure there's a few chasers heading over there. And we'll get some interesting reports from them over the next couple of days. Meanwhile, look at Henri out here. Very interesting. This is Bermuda. And here's Henri trying to ramp up. Very, very vigorous circulation. Lots of lightning with it. Some dry air and some northerly shear coming down from the north. And that is helping to push some of the convection south and displacing it a little bit. But once that shear abates and lessens a little bit, you kind of let off the gas just enough, then this thing will become much more symmetrical, and it too will develop a core and be off to the races. I, I believe we'll see a well-developed eye with this, and eventually it's going to become a pretty strong hurricane between Hatteras and Bermuda on its way where? Well, that's the part we got to try to figure out over the coming days, and this is very important because... The potential is it could impact a very populated area of the country. First of all, Grace is going to traverse this area of really high ocean heat content, even when it gets into the southwest Gulf Bay of Campeche area. Uh, the upper ocean heat content is substantial there as well, so I expect it to be pretty strong. Now, Henri is located over in this region. This is where it will be traversing. These upper ocean heat content values are not nearly as high is what we have in the Caribbean, but don't let that fool you. This is nice and deep, warm water that is showing up in the lower to mid part of the ocean heat content values, depending on, like, there's the Gulf Stream right there. So Henri definitely has plenty of untapped ocean water that's warm to work with. And just to give you an idea of that, this is the latest... Uh, this is not an anomaly. This is the actual sea surface temperatures here in the Atlantic, uh, in the Western Atlantic. So what we're looking for, this is the 26 Celsius line right here. Why is that important? That's about 79 and a half, 80 degrees. We'll just call it 80 Fahrenheit. Anything south of that line is sufficiently warm enough to grow and sustain a tropical storm or a hurricane. North of this line, you start getting cooler water temperatures, less latent heat in the atmosphere, less uh, ocean heat content, you name it. And, you know you know the deal. The deal, colder water weakens tropical systems. So a couple of lessons here in basic geography. The distance closer to the equator between latitude lines and even longitude lines, once you get closer to the equator, it changes because of the way the the system works, but it's about 60 nautical miles, all right? So let's just take a look at this and see how far from the 26 Celsius line uh, New England is, and let's use the color black here to highlight everything. So this is 38 degrees north latitude right here. This is 40 degrees, okay, and that's 42, all right? So 
40, uh, 38 to 40 is about 120 nautical miles. And then from 40 to 42 is another 120, roughly. So let's just say that from the north part of the 26 Celsius line, right up here to the coast of southeast New England, is roughly the distance between these latitude lines that are on this particular map, this Mercator projection, uh, at 38 and 40. That's about the same distance, maybe a little bit more. So we'll call this about 140 miles plus or minus. That's not a long distance right there. It's not like the 26 line is down here, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, so a hurricane coming around would travel over colder water for a greater distance. Point is, once Henri, if it does in fact come up here and shortcut back towards the coast, like I'm going to show you, it's going to have a pretty short distance before making a potential landfall that it'll have plenty of warm water to work with. And I mean, even the 25 Celsius line, it's not like it just drops off the gradient. The temperature difference over distance is not that great. You know what I'm saying? These are not packed in, these isotherms, lines of equal temperature. It's not like it is up here in the Gulf of Maine and near Nova Scotia, where the north wall of the Gulf Stream is separated by a steep temperature gradient, and it cools off dramatically. It's only a few degrees cooler uh, the closer to New England you get, and then it actually warms up a little bit in Long Island Sound. Bottom line, it is absolutely possible to get a strong hurricane in New England and all the impacts that go with it. But don't focus on category and, oh, it's only 80 miles per hour they're forecasting, or whatever. Wait and see, we'll see what happens. It's already going to be pushing a tremendous amount of water in front of it. There's a lot of problems that could be coming with this if this comes to fruition. So let's take a look at some other clues here. This is the sea surface temperature part of it. Here's an interesting tweet. This is from a high school student. I kid you not. And you might be like, dude, you're telling us about something very important from a high school student? Yeah, because this high school student probably forgets more than I know in my little finger about a lot of this synoptic stuff and the modeling. I mean, this high school student is pretty on top of it. Let's just say that. Uh, give credit where credit is due. I mean, these kids coming up these days, they're smoking hot in terms of the intellect that they have, and they have a bright future in front of them. So I wanted to uh, qualify it. Why am I showing you a high school student? Well, they know what they're talking about, and I need to message them and say, you know, who are you? What is your name? Uh, last 10 runs of the GEFS. What is that? That's the ensemble forecast system has been correcting towards a more amplified pattern. Correcting is a key word there. Stronger shortwave trough, a more intense ridge south of Canada. Where have we seen that before? We saw that coming months ago in some of the long range modeling and a stronger depiction of Henri itself. As a result, chances of the tropical cyclone coming close, if not inland, has risen. So these are the trends here in the GFS ensemble system, the EFS ensemble forecast system over the last several days. More ridging out here. These are heights rising, a stronger reflection of Henri. So it looks like it could get trapped instead of shoot out to sea, bend back as heights build over the top. I'll show you what that means in a second and possibly make a direct landfall in New England. All right. And to that end, a tweet here from Eric Webb as I was talking about the 500 millibar anomaly that is a departure from normal or departure from something for uh, landfall in New England hurricanes since 1851. In other words, what does it take to get a hurricane to hit New England? This is the general pattern and overall it is generally a similar steering pattern forecast for Henri that gave us landfalls of Sandy and Irene. This is the pattern it takes. Kind of what we're seeing here. Heights rising, building anomalously, above average, over southeast Canada, traps these systems, they pinwheel back, and bam, you get a landfall in New England. Potentially. So let's take a look at things one at a time. GFS here from the 12Z run today. Uh, there's Grace, there's Henri, Let's just put this into motion. This is the 
5,000 foot level of the atmosphere, so kind of low down in the atmosphere, not quite a mile up. And you see Grace goes into the Yucatan, across the Yucatan, and into Mexico there with that southwest turn. Pretty intense, more than likely. That's a strong depiction in the GFS. You notice now with Henri, what does it do? Well, going back, this is right now, heading uh, west generally as the high pressure keeps it kind of pinned down there. Then the high pressure lets off a little bit as a little bit of a trough moves in, so Henri starts to turn. You think, hey, there it goes on out to sea. Uh, big swells for the Outer Banks, surfs up. Ocean City, Maryland, you know, Atlantic City, you name it. Uh, and then it goes off the map, and you go, oh, where'd it go? What's happening? Well, let's switch over, shall we? I love what Levi has done, so we can switch extents here. So let's see, again, this is the 5,000 foot level, 850 millibars from the 12Z GFS. This is the leftover energy of Fred. There is Henri. Here's a part of the ridging right here. Remember, the atmosphere is layered, so that's just one layer of the ridge. So there comes uh, the leftovers of Fred through New England. There's Henri headed towards the Carolinas. Then it's like, eh, I'll take a little bit of a turn towards the north from Fred kind of eroding the ridge a little bit, some shortwave energy. But then look what happens. It shortcuts in, makes landfall in eastern Long Island, not even out to day five. I mean, just shy of five days out. Why does that happen? There's a couple of clues here. You see that height line right there? That is denser air in the atmosphere is one way to look at it. And that's what this is, if I can talk, that is what this is going to come down to. The stronger Henri is, the more it feels the larger parts of the atmosphere. And they kind of work against and with each other. They, they interact with each other. Henri is not a solid piece of wood in a river. Everything's fluid. It's just different densities of fluid. So as Henri moves north, that little extra height line that I drew in there is so important because that's a little bit thicker of an atmosphere that kind of blocks it from going on out to sea. And you can see that very clearly if I just run the slider back and forth here, hopefully, let's see if I can make this work for you. If I run the slider back and forth, look at what happens. It's coming in and then it shortcuts in because that little piece of energy there, or not energy, but high pressure builds over it just to the north and east. Where? Southeast Canada. How does that figure into this? That's what this shows. So you see, this is what it takes to get a hit. This is what the GFS is forecasting. No surprise there. Let's switch it over to the broad Atlantic shot. Now we're up at 500 millibars of the atmosphere, about 18, 20,000 feet, something like that. This is the outline of that ridge. It's nice and thick in the atmosphere. There's Henri. We kind of go through the motions here as well. And there it comes west. The ridge erodes a little bit and it's able to gain some latitude. But then look what happens. These big height rises right here coming out of Canada. That's not a trough coming in to scoop it. There's your trough energy back here. Probably going to be too late. I say probably. We'll see. And so Henri is like trying to leave, but look what happens. You can even see the heights build up at the 500 millibar level right there. It's over at the 5,000 foot level here. It's at the 500 or 18,000 foot level here at 500 millibars. I know I'm throwing a lot at you. Bottom line is the pattern is there for this to potentially make landfall in New England. And you can see it here as well on the East Coast shot or the lower 48 shot as we call it. It goes west, comes north like it's going to take off. Pretty low pressure in there in the 960s. That would be a solid hurricane. But look what happens. The heights build over Canada. It gets kind of trapped there. Makes landfall in southern New England, Long Island area. Then it's able to get on the backside uh, and the northwest side as heights build over here. That just kind of shoves it out of the way. It's all about the density of the air. Literally what it comes down to. And the larger and stronger Henri is in the atmosphere, the more these pieces really do influence it going forward. So if it becomes a hurricane sooner rather than later, I believe that that will increase the, uh, uh, the odds of a landfall, if not a very close call, for somewhere in New England. And there's a couple of other things to note. 
I'm going to get rid of me. I forgot to pull up an, an important graphic. That's okay. We can do it real quick off of our home page here at Hurricane Track. So this is the sea surface temperature anomalies. I believe this is a big factor because look at all of the warm water relative to average over the northwest Atlantic. That warmer water feeds back into the high pressure areas and helps them, the ridges, be stronger. And that's why I think we've been seeing stuff correct every run because the models have a hard time understanding that. This is an anomaly. It is a departure from something. What is the something? It's the 30 year average. These water temperatures are significantly warmer than they should be over a huge area. What is that going to do? That's going to inflate the ridge. It just does. And so I think that's a big factor as we go forward in how Henri will behave both with intensity, water temperatures are warmer, and with inflating the ridge enough to possibly get this to make landfall. So you folks in New England, you know, the East Coast as a whole, uh, you need to be watching this extremely closely. All right, you can connect and follow YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. That's the main social media that we take advantage of. And we are crowdfunded by this awesome platform. It's called Patreon, and I'm on it. It is a way for you to, you know, shape the future. You can become a member. It's not a subscription. Don't think of it as that. I'm not selling you something. I'm saying, look, you want to help build the future of what we do? That interactive map I showed you, all of our unmanned cams, exclusive content. Yes, if you help fund it, you get access to stuff. But think of it more as a cooperative than a subscription service. I mean, come on, we know crowdfunding now and what it can do. Artists, musicians, filmmakers, and even people in the weather benefit from this and you can become a part of it. Uh, this is how you do it at patreon.com slash hurricane track. The link is in the description of today's video in case you are able to become a part of that community. All right, so started off with an emotional rant about, you know, yawning when you see not a hurricane and ended with the potential for a significant impact for millions of people in New England. I will be on top of it, uh, tweeting stuff. I've got the Patreon that I can post stuff to as well and our Hurricane Track Insider Chat, a good group of people there. And we'll watch this very carefully. A couple things before I let you go. It's interesting that the Hurricane Center mentioned two very important things. One is the notice that, yes, it is correcting more west. Uh, and they had to acknowledge that. Two, that they are going to task uh, the Weather Service to launch extra balloons, these high-altitude balloons, uh, we call these soundings, and they're going to ask the Weather Service offices throughout parts of the eastern part of the country to do that uh, more over the next couple of days. And I forgot, too, they're going to actually get the Gulf Stream 4 jet to fly around out over the western Atlantic these are signs, kind of reading between the lines, that we need to take Henri very seriously. When they're ordering extra weather balloon launches, that's a big clue right there that we could be staring down the barrel of a very important hurricane potential here for a region of the country that I dare say is ill-prepared on a general scale. We'll talk about that more too if we need. All right, that is it from me for today. As always, thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate it. I am Mark Sutteth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.